What's going on, everybody? We are back. Episode 141 of the Dark Windows podcast. My name is Kevin. I'm Kevin. And this is week two of the Asshole Eliminator Tournament. Uh, This time we are going to be covering the right-hand side of the bracket, which, uh, because we did the left-hand side last time. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, why don't you refresh everybody as to how those matchups were and who our winner was going to the finals our winner going to the finals was it was the fucking psycho uh ishii well i was gonna say that's not narrowing it down versus uh so basically bitch jesus i forgot (laughs) okay so our first two matchups last week were talat pasha versus kim il sung uh then we had had yosef mengala yes then we had uh, yosef mengala versus ishii yeah, but uh, Talat Pasha moved on to yes. go against uh, Pol Pot, uh, who Pol was Pot, our rando who, into the second round. Yes, and we said that Pasha won. Nope. Right? No, nope. Pol, Pot Pol Pot won, and he then we had I, we had Ishi versus Mangala, and yep. we came down as a tiebreaker, close one. But Ishii won out because Ishii was fucking... He's a disgusting, disgusting yes. person. And it was basically a no-brainer from there. Yeah. For Pol Pot versus Ishii. And I mean, don't get me Ishii wrong. Pol Pot, Pol Pot was a horrible person. Uh, but Ishii he wasn't was as bad. way worse. Yeah, definitely. So who do we have in our first, our first matchup? Looks like we've got a... Uh, looks like your first round or your first overall draft pick versus my number four overall. Yeah. So that. Okay. Well, so sh- your first <laughs> overall draft pick was Idi Amin. Yes. Okay. And so let's. So. He's going against. He's going up against your... my number four overall, Mao Zedong. Aha. Uh-huh. Who was a Mao. huge pile of dog shit. All right, so what? do we want to start off with Edie, or do you want to start off with Mao? Why don't you start us off? Okay. So Edie Amin, his full name is Edie Amin Dada um, Umi. Uh, he was born, it's not sure when he was born, actually. Of it course. Was either, but it was either 1924 or 1925. Uh, but it is known that he was born in uh Kogo Kogoboko Uganda. Yeah, oh, uh, easy for you to say. Yes. Uh <laughs> and it's also known that he died uh August 16th of 2003 in Jida. Damn, really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. In uh Jida, Saudi Arabia. Uh oh, Jeddah? Claimed... Huh? Jeddah? No, not Jeddah. Uh, well, I don't know. It could be Jeddah, Jeddah. I, I think it's Jeddah. I mean, I'm not Saudi Arabian, but you know, I'm, I am definitely not a wordsmith. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, he claimed that he f- had fought in World War II, but that's not confirmed either. For who? Allied side. Huh, okay. Because that w- at the time, Uganda was a British um, papal state. Colony. <laughs> Whatever, different. Colo- <laughs> anyway. Well, uh- uh, so, but that's not confirmed. But what is confirmed, though, is that he was actually in the King's Royal Army as an assistant cook in 1946. Ah, very high ranking. Yes. Uh, he would rise to the ranks actually rather quickly. Uh, he was also, the at the same time, the Ugandan heavyweight boxing champ. 
from 1951 can, to 1960. I can see that. He and looked like a like a big rugged fuck. He was also a swimmer. Okay. Yeah. I never would have uh, thought like competitive swimmer, but I could definitely see the the professional boxer kind of thing because I mean he's got he, he was like all upper body. He was a big dude. Yeah. He was known amongst his fellow soldiers for his overzealous and cruel interrogations. Uh, he would serve in the British force from 1952 to 1956, and he would see action against the Mau Mau uh, revolt in Kenya. Uh, <laughs> before Uganda became independent in 1962, Edie began uh, became friends with uh, Milton uh, Oboti, who was the nation's prime minister and president. Okay, I was going to say, that name rings a bell. Yeah. I've definitely heard uh, they, that one used before. They actually worked together to smuggle gold, coffee, and ivory out of uh, Congo. Oh, good guys. Uh, I mean, at the time, it really wasn't the Congo. It was actually... I like believe Zaire, it was Zaire. Or some shit like that, yeah. Maybe. I'm not quite sure on that one. Because it, it's, it's flip-flopped so many goddamn names. It could have been the Congo. It could have been Zaire. It could have <laughs> been... Zaire could have I'm been not Congo too. I'm not too good been. on African history, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it it's, it's flip flopped, you know, like ten different times between its names. The kid's like a, you know, it. It's like every other where... country in Africa, they change names fucking constantly. Well, especially like the northwestern part of it. Like, there's a bunch of them up there that change names like every thirty minutes. True. I mean, on who's fucking in charge of it at the moment? Yeah, like, uh, I mean, Egypt been Egypt for a long time. Oh no, I'm talking like the other other side of the country. Oh yeah, like, yeah, Burkina, yeah, I know. like Burkina Faso, fucking uh, uh, Ivory Coast. But conflicts soon arose between them, and on January 25th of 1971, while Obodi was attending a meeting in Singapore, Amin staged a successful military coup. Of course he did, because that's what African dictators do. Exactly. Every single fucking one of them. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Edie became the president and chief of the armed forces in 1971, field marshal in 1975, and okay. life pres- and then life president in 1976. Listen, he didn't become any of those things. He made himself those things. <laughs> All right, fine. He was, uh, he was he a started, fucking cook. He does not qualify to be a fi- like a field a field marshal. Well, he <laughs> did start his ruling off on a good note, though. Oh, of course, because um, that's how it always does. Yeah, by he performed some popular actions like freeing political uh, prisoners. So that was a good thing. Yeah. So while there's one, doing the one good thing. Yeah. Well, that was wiped out because while doing those good deeds. He was also having kill squads go around <sighs> and kill anyone who supported a boaty. Okay, so that one good thing goes away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he would have people that were part of the Akoli and Lango ethnic groups, uh, military personnel, and civilians killed. Oh, nice guy. Nice so guy. If, if they were part of those done his victims soon came uh to include people from every order and rank including journalists lawyers homosexuals students and senior bureaucrats that that's something that's something with africa they really really do not like the gays i'm not 100 percent sure why but the, n- no. none of them do well it's it, i that in the middle east too same thing yeah same yeah. difference either way i guess um Let's see. So uh, he expelled all Asians from Uganda in 1972. An action that led to... So like all four of them that were there? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) An action that led to the breakdown of his country's economy. In July of 1976, he was personally involved in the hijacking of a French airliner in... Oh, uh, boy. (laughs) And (laughs) Tebe... Uh, in October of 1978, Amin ordered an attack on Tanzania. Okay. Uh, 
Aided by Ugandan nationalists, Tanzanian troops eventually overpowered the Ugandan army. As the That's Tanzanian... some shit. When you could stop a fucking foreign army with just, like, dudes that were yeah. farming, like, six hours ago? Yeah. Uh, as the Tanzanian-led forces neared Kampala, Uganda's capital, on July 13, 1979, he fled the, the city. Yeah, smart move. He escaped first to Libya. Uh, he finally actually then settled in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, Edie during his reign would have been known or would be known as the, quote, Butcher of Uganda. Uh-huh. He had another really funny nickname, too. Actually, that's not that's actually made up for the movie. The last the King of Scotland that's actually made up. I never once saw reference to uh he was actually known as the butcher of scotland a butcher of uganda yeah oh oh so here oh i did find another awesome with that little book i got i don't know if you found it or not hold on tight because this is a big one lord of all the beasts on earth and fishes of the sea conqueror of the british empire in africa in general <laughs> and in uganda yeah that's well, a fucking title. He didn't conquer the British. He it's fucking in his mind. He conquered the British. He didn't do shit. We're telling his story. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, it is believed that somewhere around three hundred thousand people were killed during his presidency. Ah. And on April sixteenth, two thousand three, Amin died in Jida, Saudi Arabia. The cause of his death was reportedly to reported to be. Multiple organ failure. Oh, God. Although, for a second, I thought you were going to say multiple orgasms. I'd be like, what a way to yes. go. <laughs> I mean, judging uh, from the looks of this guy, he could have also overdosed on spare ribs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, although the Ugandan government announced that his body would be buried in Uganda, he was quickly buried in actually in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> they fucking uh, fired he, him in a hole on the side of the road. Fuck yes. this guy. But he was never, ever once tried for his abuse of human rights. Well, you know, that's going to be kind he of got a, a, fucking a... away scot-free with killing 300,000 plus people and being a complete dickhead to all of his people. And just like, eh, have fun. Unf unfortunately, that's going to be a running theme through the rest of this episode. Cause, uh, Spoiler yeah. alert, all of these dudes died free for the most part. Uh, the only one that actually got what was coming to him was fucking Talat Pasha, and he got his brain scattered across the cobblestone in Germany somewhere. Yeah. But um, yeah, so oh. well, let, let's hear let's hear why he should move on. Make your argument. Well, uh, <laughs> I will say the reason why he should move on is the fact that he just like so many of the others that we uh, talked about last week they used their he used his resources which was being part of the military mm -hmm. so he used the british military to mm -hmm. gain um notoriety okay okay and also, which taught him interrogation. Okay, so which he used made his military him, training. Yeah, I mean, but interrogation, you know, you could, I mean, you could be fucking cruel. And, oh, you know, yeah. you could push the limits quite yeah. a bit. You could do some really gross shit to other people. Yeah. And then, and then he, you know, I guess he learned how to kind of backstab people a little bit. And he, you know, he fucked over a guy that was his friend. That, you know, they had done a ton of stuff with, you know, which includes smuggling gold, coffee, I and ivory. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think they were actually friends or did his usefulness just run out? It was most likely that second one. Uh, no, because he took advantage of him, of him leaving the country. As soon as he left the country, he was like. Here's my time to strike. Like I said, they weren't really because... friends. They were just. 
useful uh, you know uh, acquaintances. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, useful. You're like yeah. Until until his usefulness ran out and he had an opportunity. Yeah. To fucking dive on it. But I mean, his actions of wiping out so many people just because they either liked a guy or their <laughs> sexuality. Yeah. Or, you know, just kind of uh, eh, eats away at you. I mean, this then, is also... And, and, th- and then to actually, you know, <laughs> have the balls to hijack a French airliner. Do you know That's what the French ballsy. will do to your ass? Especially Nothing. if they... Well, if they send their secret police <laughs> after you... This was before you... Gigan existed, dude. Oh, that's, okay, probably. Well... And I'm pretty sure they, they pull most of those guys in from, like, Switzerland, because, uh, <laughs> you know... All right. You're not, allowed, you're not allowed to smoke cigarettes and kill terrorists at the same time. <laughs> true, true. But uh, still, you gotta have the balls. Our baguette seven <laughs> bread launcher. But still, to have the balls to hijack, have ha, be personally involved in hijacking of a French airliner. Um, now, was that on his account, or is that like, yeah, documented by other people? Because this guy was fucking nuts. No, on his account, I mean, it was on well documented by others or whatever. Okay, I'm just making sure because if it's yeah. like, I wouldn't trust a word this dude's saying about himself. Yeah, and then to completely attack another country. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let's try to take your ass over. But it's just Tanzania. It's like there's nobody there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, true. What, what are they gonna do? Turn the fucking gazelle on him? Well, apparently they did good enough because they kicked his ass out. Yeah, you know? and like I said, they're just like fucking farmers. They're just like, nah, fuck yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so unfortunately, that's I guess that's why I feel that he can move on, but. We'll see. Uh, unfortunately, he did not have the market cornered this week on killing people that disagreed with him because uh, we got some heavy hitters on the side. Well, <laughs> um, of course. So let me introduce you to the man that's going to knock Idi Amin out of the tournament. Let's talk about Mao Zedong real quick. Okay. Oh, boy. So Mao was a late Christmas present the day after Christmas, 1893. He's born in the in Hunan province, China to a family of peasants that became fairly affluent farmers uh, and grain dealers just due to uh, some business dealings that his father had going on Um, Mm -hmm. Had very humble beginnings, considering what he was going to do later in his life where, you know, chairman Mao, not a good dude. So he attended his small villages school until he was 13. And then uh, he left school and started working full time, full time on the family farm as you do, because, there's no child labor laws and you got shit to do other than go to school. Child labor laws. This is China. <laughs> yeah. They still don't have that shit. Thanks Apple. So farming wasn't his thing. So he kind of broke most of the norms of the time by disregarding the arranged marriage that he had been set up with. Um, by the way, he, at the time he was 14, the woman they were, his parents were marrying him off to was 20. Um, he never consummated the marriage. Never even actually spoke to the woman. It was just kind of like, yeah, no, I'm good. And just took off. He just fucking boogied off to uh, Shangsha, which was the provincial capital, to pursue a secondary education. That's um, kind of that's kind of different. Usually, it's, yeah. Usually, you're it's to a younger you're... girl. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But I'm assuming she was from a uh, more affluent family than they would have been. Uh-huh. And just trying to marry his kid up the food chain. Yeah. Um, yep. So shortly above after his, he said, above his means, yep. Yeah, he's Sorry. marrying above his station. Yeah. Uh, so shortly after he started school, there was a small revolution that kicked off in uh, in 19, uh, 1911 against the Qing dynasty. Mm-hmm. So this is the people stepping up against the uh, you know the dynastic rulers of China for the last fucking however many hundreds of years. Their whole thing lasted Thousands. because I mean. China has been around for a fucking billion years and they've had different dynasties through it. I don't know how long the Qing dynasty lasted because it was actually the last one Mm -hmm. essentially. So he joined up with a unit of the revolutionary army in Hunan and uh, uh, spent half a year fighting, like actually fighting, not like pushing paper. He was, you know, in the trenches fighting with people. 
1913 to 1918, he studied at the teacher's training school where he was getting more and more into uh, these more revolutionary ideas. And he got really, really fascinated with the Russian Revolution of 1917. Spoiler alert, if anybody doesn't know, that's when Tsar Nicholas and his family get stood against a wall and fucking mowed down by the Bolsheviks. There you go. Quick Russian history Sup- lesson. Supposedly, they were all killed. Supposedly. According to the Disney movie, one of them lived. Anyway. Well, no, that's that's actually based <laughs> off of some merit that they think that uh, Anastasia actually uh, survived. I don't know. I, I don't know how. I, I'd have to do more looking into that to see where I fall with that one. That that's that's the that's the rumor mill. That's the right. that's the scuttlebutt or or right. whatever you want to call it. You know that she actually was smuggled away and survived. You know, became someone else. Yeah, but I mean, fuck that's it. All I think, I th- speculation. I think it actually point. made it to like unsolved mysteries. I think. Oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. It had to have. Yeah. So after he graduated from school, he followed his professor to Beijing and took a job in the Beijing University where he met his uh, uh, in the library um, where he met his supervisor, Lee Days How. So I'm going to pronounce it. I mean, unless it's on a menu, I can't usually read Chinese words. Um, so he was actually one of the founders of the CCP, which was the Chinese Communist Party. Yay, I got another fucking commie. CCP. Oh, wow, well, that's that's but that's Russian, right? No, it's it, it was in this case it was Chinese Communist Party, so CCP. I wanted to throw this in because it's not going to seem like an important detail, but this is where he would kind of run into his uh basically rival for the re- almost for the rest of his life. Um potentially my new favorite Chinese commander of all time. He he goes up against a group called the Kumatang, which was the Chinese Nationalist Party, or we're going to call it KMT from here on out, because that's how they initiated, uh, initiated it. Yeah, oh, you're thinking Kumatai. <laughs> that's blood sport. That's different. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> you just went, the, you said that. I was like, Kumatai? What? Yeah. <laughs> So, so the Kumatang is under the leadership of a man by the name of Chiang Kai Shek, who Ooh, Chiang Kai Shek. Yeah. So, Wait, right Chiang after, didn't he become ruler he, for a little bit? We'll get there, like for yeah. a, a split second. Um, but while Mao is like learning more about the Communist Party, Chiang Kai Shek and his boys made five thousand good communists in Shanghai. When they mowed down a whole bunch of them at a fucking rally, and that kicked off the Chinese Civil War. Ooh. So for once, the communists didn't start it, but they got what they deserved preemptively. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. No, this fucking scary little Chinese man came in with a bunch of guns and just killed everybody. <laughs> You're uh, all dead. Yes. Good. So Mao takes the reins of the CCP, which is the Chinese Communist Party, like we said before. Yeah. Yep. And led uh, led what was called the Autumn Harvest Uprising, which sounds like, I don't know, it's got a very peaceful name. Uh, but that was against the KMT. Uh, him. The CCP, him and, the KMT. <laughs> so him and the communist forces got crushed by the KMT. They lost 90% of their forces very early on in the war. Oh, wow. Um, this wasn't bad enough, though, clearly. Uh, he rallied some more forces, um, mostly getting peasants from the countryside to come in and fight for him. Um, by June of 1928, the KMT had taken Beijing and become recognized as the government of China, putting Chiang Kai-shek as the nominal president of China, I guess would be the way to put it. De facto uh, president or, gov- yeah. or whatever, ruler. So Mao and his, his forces keep building setting up camps in the southern Hunan and Jiangxi provinces. Uh, and this would be the foundation for what would later become Maoism because it's, he's taking communism, but he's yep. twisting it to his own view yep. and then having, and other people are, are following on with it. So in 1931, Mao was elected chairman of the Soviet Republic of China in, in Jiangxi province, which is like this tiny, tiny little area compared to the rest of China. Yeah. Um, but as soon as he took over, he ordered the torture and deaths of roughly 200,000 people. So, good guy. 
uh, the, the same year, the KMT started to turn up the heat and Mao was actually demoted from his leadership role. Oh, so wow. then in, yeah. So then in 1944, the U.S. sends the Dixie mission to help the Chinese fight the Japanese as part of World War II. Um, OK. And the reason they backed the communists is because they found they were more organized and less corrupt than the KMT, where honestly, I think if they had gotten there a few years earlier and seen what these guys were doing to the communists, they'd have been like, these are our guys. Let's, <laughs> let's back this fucking horse. Yeah. You know? Um, so obviously world war two ends, the Japanese are out of, Ch- out of China and another short war kicks off between the KMT and what's now being called the PLA, which is the people's liberation army. Um, and once that whole thing happens, Mao and his boys force Chiang Kai-shek and all his guys off to Taiwan. So by October of 1949, he's moved, uh, he's moved into the forbidden city and taken complete power of China. He ordered the deaths of landlords across the country, which resulted in anywhere between two to five million deaths of landowners. And he also started a campaign, uh, started a, quote, campaign to suppress counter-revolutionaries that led to another 800,000 deaths, including a large number of people that were directly opposed to Maoism. So he's got quite the body count going here. Yeah, and I I think some of it... uh... Some of those deaths were uh, uh, now. I think there was a lot more deaths actually, because I think there was deaths from uh, oh. like starvation and stuff. Oh, we haven't even gotten into that yet. So, actually, we're 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 headed there very quickly uh, with a a thing that he put forward called the five year plan. Mao directed his forces to target the wealthy and anyone he thought was a possible capitalist. Uh, these people would be subject uh, subjected to quote struggle sessions that were carried out in public and they ranged from public humiliation to beatings to full blown public torture. Um, Not everybody survived these struggle sessions. And a lot of the people that did would actually go on to commit suicide due to, uh, you know, some kind of a PTSD kind of thing, or even potentially embarrassment for, uh, you know, dishonoring anybody, you know, uh, there, yeah, because you, you just lost your station yeah, in life. Yeah. Because, I mean, they, he, they were like, well, your, your, your shit is now not your shit. Your shit is yeah. our shit. Yeah. You know. He then put forward an, another five-year plan. So this time, his plan was to make China an industrial power. In what he called the Great Leap Forward, he urged farmers to smell iron for the greater good of the country and ignore the crops that they're supposed to be tending to. This would result in the starvation deaths of 30 to 40 million Chinese citizens between 1958 and 1960. So 30 to 40 million people starved to death in two years. Yeah. So in 1962, Mao was kind of pushed aside after a bit of an internal struggle. Uh, But by 1966, he made a comeback. Uh, called on the younger generation to start a cultural revolution and destroy what he referred to as the four olds, old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. This would lead to college age students destroying centuries old art and writings, burning down buildings that have been around for longer than some people can even imagine. Um, And then they were just randomly attacking people in the streets. Anybody who they thought was, uh, but anybody they considered to be an intellectual they would just drag through the streets and beat to death. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I knew that some of this happened. I mean, dude, he was a, he was a fucking monster. Yeah. So through the seventies, Mao's health starts to fail. Um, a lot of people think he had Parkinson's or ALS or possibly both. Um, and honestly, I would never wish that on anybody, but good. Fuck this guy. Um, In 1976, he suffered two major heart attacks and would die after being removed from life support September 9th, 1976. Oh, wow. So, obviously, he's he's pretty gross. Um, But here's some bullet points to uh, just, 
for to make my That's... argument as to why he should be Idi Amin, uh, if I we have to even go through it. I don't even think we have to, really. But We're going to, though. Fuck it. Let's hear him. <laughs> and this is why he's going to go on and face Hitler in the second round. <laughs> uh... he, had, he had anywhere between 40 and 80 million people total, quote, destroyed for not being communist or not being communist enough or his flavor of communi- communist. He redistributed land from landowners that were killed under his watch and gave it to the peasants that he would, as yep. he would refer to them. Yeah. And then basically starved those people to death after he gave them the land that he had taken from the people he had ordered killed. Yeah. Uh, during world war two, his, his CCP and the KMT joined forces actually to fight off the Japanese you know, kind of, you know, united front against a greater enemy, yeah. which honestly, yeah. the fucking Japanese during World War II, as we talked about last week, were gross to the Chinese. They were. Um, but as soon as like almost like like from days after the end of World War II, he kicked off that secondary civil war. He went mm-hmm. after these guys. He made no attempt to make it a better place for everyone to live. He wanted communism and anyone who got in his way was going to die for it. So that is uh, that's Mao Zedong. Uh, I, you know, if he was he moves on, he moves if he was on. a magic, if he was a magic <laughs> card, he would be a legendary creature, piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> so Mao to, moves forward. Yes, that that's that's definitely a no brainer, dude. I don't know, man. I might have to compete against myself in the finals. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So why don't we uh, why don't we move on to our second match and uh, why don't we start at the bottom of that bracket uh, and uh, you pick okay. us up with a. Uh... So who do we have next? Well, Joseph Stalin, born December eighteenth, eighteen seventy nine, in Gory, Georgia. Yeah, not Georgia, the state. It's like Georgia. just west of Savannah, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah. And his real name was not Joseph Stalin. It was actually Losef Visser- Pollen. No- huh? <laughs> Losef Pollen. Yeah, Losef Pollen, yeah. Losef Viserianovich. You fucking made uh, that up. You're full no. of shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that, ain't, that ain't anybody's real name. No, that's that was his name. Uh, di- uh, the Huga, the Huga, the Huga Yeah, the Huga, yeah, the Huga Chaka. Chaka. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was a frail child, and at the age of seven, he got smallpox. Which didn't left didn't he like not scared. talk until he was five, or uh, some shit like that? I did not see that. No, that's one of the things I've heard about him. It could have just been made up propaganda nah, because he was a piece of up. shit. But I don't know. Um. He uh, a few years after he getting smallpox, he was in a carriage accident, and his arm was left slightly disformed because of it. So he's not only got a pocked face, but he has now a disformed arm. Now some claim that Aww. his arm Poor being guy. disformed was actually due to blood poisoning from the injury in his arm oh. that made it that way. Yeah, it didn't it didn't do it good enough? Yeah. Um, he was not treated very nice by other children in his village, and this made him have an inferiority complex. And this is the reason why he, he had turned a mean out to be a streak a... Yeah. for those that crossed him. And he also strived to be respected and great. Mm. Uh, his mother, being a devout Christian, wanted him to be a priest. So she got him enrolled into a Catholic school in 1888. Oh, could you and imagine? I, yeah. This fucking well, guy is a priest? Yeah. Well, he Oof. kind of he was in anyway, he was in, close to it. He did so well in school that he was awarded a scholarship to attend uh Tiflis Theological Seminary in 1894. Hmm. So he's on his way to be a priest. Damn. Uh, he should have stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 1895, he was introduced to a secret society called uh, Mesami D- uh, Daisi. They are were supported. Uh, they supported Georgian independence from Russia, 
and some of the members being socialists introduced him to the writings of his his greatness, Karl Marx. And the fuck did you just say? His greatness? Yes. It's not Michael Jordan, motherfucker. This guy's a piece of shit, too. <laughs> just because he had good hair. Karl Marx wasn't a piece of shit. Ah, uh, he, 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 father, he was the father of pieces of shit. Therefore, by association, no, piece of shit. He just wrote a book about uh, a utopia. Which, oh, yeah. And that didn't go badly for, I don't know, 80 million people we just talked about? Well... Or the fucking other 50 million we're about to talk about. (laughs) Once again, I keep reiterating, just because you write something down in a book and people try to follow it does not make it your fault that they fuck it up. I mean, if he had just wiped his ass with it, it would have been better for everybody. George Orwell wrote The Animal Farm, which was basically a play off of, you know, off of The Little Red Book, which basically tried to say tried to show that you know a farm of uh, animals on how communism works but then it shows that even you know giving them human ideals it doesn't work no because the utopia can't work because of the human element of wanting things anyway i could rant forever anyway, right so Another guy he was introduced to was the writings of Vladimir Lenin. Um, he would join the socialist. Uh, no, wait. He would join the the group in actually in 1898. Uh, he would leave school the year after in 1899, and the reason for him leaving is not clear. Actually, his mustache finally came in. He had to leave yeah. school. Yeah. Uh, he would stay in town, in the town um, that he was going to school in, which was Tiflis, uh, and he would join the Social Democratic Labor Party in 1901, and he actually worked for, full-time for that revolutionary movement. Uh, in 1902, he was exiled to Serbia for coordinating a labor strike. Honestly, just by the looks of him, he probably would have fit in pretty well in Serbia. Just a big square jawed fuck with a big thick mustache. Yeah. You could have thrown him in Turkey and he would have fit there too. Or Greece. Uh, so during this time, he would take on the name of Stalin. Um, And he actually changed it from Losef to Joseph, I guess. Yeah, because Losef is a made up name. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, so... After escaping from from exile, he was um, marked by these motherfuckers. I hate how they have like names, but it's the the Okaranka, okay. which is the Czar's secret police. And as an outlaw, and he continued his work in hiding. Raising money through robberies, kidnappings, and extortion. Stalin gained infamy being associated with the 1907 Tiflis robbery, uh, bank robbery, which resulted in several deaths and 250,000 rubles stolen, which is approximately $47 American. Nope. (laughs) 3.4 million in U.S. dollars. So rubles worth a lot more. Then, then, well, probably now. Uh, in 1922, Stalin was appointed uh, to the newly created Office of General Secretary of the Communist Party. Uh, though not significant, not a significant post, uh, it gave Stalin control over all, all party member appointments, which allowed him to build his base. After Lenin's death in 1924, Stalin set out to destroy the old party leadership and take total control. After his, he had people removed from power through bureaucratic shuffling and denunciations. Um, Many would be exiled abroad to Europe and America, including uh, presumably Lenin's successor, which was supposed to have been Leon Trotsky. Yeah. 
Uh, however, further paranoia set in, and Stalin soon conducted a vast terror reign of terror, having people arrested in the night and put before a uh, spectacular show of uh, trial. So by the late 1920s and early 1930s, he reversed the Bolshevik agrarian policies. And by taking that back, Stalin believed that collectivism would uh, accelerate food production, but the peasants resented losing their land and working for the state. Millions were killed in forced labor or starved during the ensuing famine. Yeah. Uh, land was given to the poor, were given to poor peoples, and organized collective farms. Any resistance was met with swift and lethal response. Millions of people were exiled by to labor camps of the gul of the gulag, or were executed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ! Uh, it's estimated that Stalin killed as many as twenty million people. Yeah, directly or indirectly through yep. famine, forced labors. Uh, collectivization and executions. Uh, and he died on my birthday in 1953. That makes so much sense. March 5th. <laughs> <laughs> when he died, he took all of your facial hair potential with him. He's like, no, Fucker. I'm keeping all the mustache. Fuck this kid. That hasn't what been, ass? that won't be born for another 30 ish years. Well, a motherfucker. <laughs> Damn son of a bitch. My father was just born then. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, so, so Stalin was a massive, massive yeah. piece of shit. Yeah, no I don't know. Yeah, he, he did. You know, I mean. I kind of skipped over. I skipped over World War Two because, I mean, that's not important. <laughs> not important, really. <laughs> you know, he, he just. Yeah, he just split up Poland with with the. Uh, he was supposed to split up Poland with uh, with Germany. It was like, nah, fuck these guys. Nah, but I mean, it. Yeah, he he started off as like they were kind of okay with with. Uh, yeah, they were cool at first. Yeah, with, with with you know Germany, they were cool with. Uh, then it turns out Hitler's a cunt. With so. Hitler, and <laughs> then they were like, yeah, not so much. Hitler kind of lost his shit. Yeah, we'll so, get into I mean, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they both didn't like the gypsies. They both didn't like the Jews. No. I mean, so, I mean, but, you know, I mean. Just both giant scumbags. They didn't like anybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had a lot of people killed by, you know, by putting them in forced labor camps. I mean, 20 million people. Dead. That's, a, that's a That's a big number. Yeah. I mean, you know, killed by either the KGB because, you know, they, they tortured the shit out of people. Oh, yeah. No doubt. You know, kill them or, or send them off to gulags. And which I mean, there's you know, that's that's no better fucking fate there. No. And, you know, or just outright executed them. So, I mean, or didn't send them anywhere and just fucking starved them to death. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that happened to the uh, Ukraine. They 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 yeah. had like ten million people starved to death there alone. Uh, yeah, but I'm you know you, you don't you don't you know kind of his uh, his childhood came back to uh, to haunt the Russian people. Yeah, he he yeah. took he took his childhood anger Ow. and aggression out on the fucking poor people of Russia. Yeah. You, you, you assholes picked on me when I was a kid. Well, fuck you. I didn't even know you when you were a kid. Yeah, well, fuck you anyway. <laughs> you look like one of my friend's dads, and he was a piece of shit. So fuck you. Exactly. Uh, all right. So, by the way, Stalin was your fifth overall pick. Yeah. Yeah. So my first round overall pick. We're gonna get into him. Uh, that is a man by the name of King Leopold II of Belgium. Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, Leopold II was born 18 was born in 1835 to believe it or not King Leopold the 1st um and his wife Louise Marie uh he was the first heir of the Belgian royal family which was in its infancy at the time considering Belgian uh Belgium was uh, around five years old when he was born. 
So it became its own country in 1830. Huh. Um, for the better part of a thousand years, it had been controlled by the Netherlands, France, Germany, and some fucking how Luxembourg, which I forget is actually a country. But for a, for um, a minute, they controlled Belgium. Um, they, they were which, pretty powerful at one time, I guess. Which is funny because Luxembourg is now approximately the size of a postage stamp. Uh, yes, with <laughs> inside of inside of. Uh, it's, it's like if you, if you took a stamp and then you took the border or, or like off of it and you just had the picture. That's how big Luxembourg is. Yeah, there's a third of a person that lives there. The rest of them lives in a different country. <laughs> yeah. This family, as with most royalty, is a bit weird, to say the least. Okay. Uh, so Junior was born first, followed shortly by uh, younger brother Felipe, uh, Philippi, whatever the fuck, and sister Charlotte. Um, but Pops meets a 16-year-old girl when he is 56 years old and knocks her up <laughs> twice. Whoa. Um, yeah, so his mistress and their bastards would actually go on to become like under royals. Uh, she was a baroness, and both of her sons became barons. So he ain't fucking around. He's like, no, 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 no. These are my kids, I guess, sort of, allegedly, but give them a crown or something. Some fuck it. crushed velvet or whatever. <laughs> whatever the fuck these weirdos are wearing in the 1830s. <laughs> so at, at the age of 18, Leopold II is married to a woman named Marie Henri, uh, Henriette, who was a uh, born in Austria. Um, and since his parents didn't really give a whole bunch of a wet fart about him, they kind of ignored the talk and, uh, left him out of some of the finer points of, uh, husbandry. Let's put it. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) a lot of people, like when they saw him and his wife, they would refer to them. This is fucking funny. They'd refer to him as the nun and the stable boy because they kind of didn't know what to do with each other. Like they wouldn't like <laughs> hold hands. They weren't like personable with each other. But thankfully for somebody, Aunt Vicky, who uh, just so happens to be the queen of England, uh, Victoria, gave him some pointers on sex stuff. So he finally figured it out. So I'm starting to think there's probably a very good chance this guy fucked his aunt or at least he sat in on a <laughs> sat in on some game plans or something probably fucked his aunt or watched uh, his aunt fuck somebody i mean i'm pretty sure he fucked his aunt <laughs> <laughs> all uh, right fine so leopold the first dies in 1865 and as he does leopold the second takes the throne um before he died, Leopold the Elder made, I am not even joking, a bare minimum of 50 attempts to conquer a colony for Belgium in an effort to compete with the other global powers. So literally tried 50 times to do this and failed every single time. Oh, well, he sucks. Yeah, he was not good at it. Uh, so this was a time when pretty much every country in Europe was disassembling Africa for their own benefit. And at a conference in Berlin in 1884, Leopold met with leaders of 14 other countries and pitched the idea of going into the Congo and claimed that he was saying, hey, listen, I want to go there. I'm going to send missionaries and we're going to convert these filthy heathens over to Christianity. It's a helpful okay. cover story for what's about to happen. Okay. The leaders of these other countries figured, fuck it. We'll let him deal with the gorillas and the lions and the crocodiles and the hippos. Congo is a fucking wild place. You've got jungles. You've got grasslands. It's the wild wild west. Yeah, there's a lot of shit going on there. So Leopold actually recruited a Welsh explorer that had some experience in and around the Congo uh, by the name of Henry Stanley, who under different circumstances, this dude probably would have been a fucking hoot at a party. Um, (laughs) Some of the (laughs) shows. He uses some creative tricks to fool the Congolese tribes folk that uh, basically to convince them that whites have superpowers. Um, He built a battery. (laughs) Dude, I shit you not. He built a battery powered device that would give him the ability to have an almost bone crushing handshake. So he would go and he'd shake hands with these tribal leaders and he'd flip a little switch. And there was just like this extra little grip and he could just kind of huh. squash their hand and like just be like, I'm white, fuck you. Uh, 
he would often use a magnifying glass to light his cigars to prove that white men had power over the sun, which as a white man, I feel fully confident in saying we do not have power over the sun. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> kind of it's uh, kind of like a little bit of like a, uh kind of like saying that uh he's a god. It's the same bullshit we did to the Indians. Um sort of here, Here's the best one. On one occasion, he gave the chief of one of these tribes a revolver. Told him to step back three steps and shoot him. So the chief's like, okay, cool. Pulls up, pulls the trigger. This dude doubles over. He's holding his chest. And then he starts to laugh. He stands back up straight, takes his shoe off and shakes a bullet out of it. And the the chief is in complete shock because white people are bulletproof. It literally hit him and went right down into his shoe. There's something fucky there. There was no bullet in the gun. <laughs> it had to have been. Or, or there was, was a bullet, but it was but it was just powder. It, there was no bullet at all in the gun. He didn't explain to these people how this worked. He just basically told them, pull the trigger and uh, and you'll shoot me. Like, okay, cool. Oh. I want to shoot you because you're kind of a piece of shit. And he's like, oh, you shot me. Ha ha ha. Surprise. Savage, look at this bullet right out of my shoe. Yeah. So after he pulls all these kind of like nasty little pranks on the uh, the tribal leaders, he would present them with a contract and they signed it. No questions asked because they were terrified of this man. And by signing this contract, it made Leopold II the new owner of the Congo and everything in it. <laughs> So to prove that he had the best interest of the natives in mind, he renamed it the Congo Free State. But to stick to his guns, he actually did fund everything going on uh, expedition-wise out of zone, out of his own pocket. So out of the pockets of the Belgian people. So he sent explorers out into the wilds of the Congo looking for anything of value, hoping to find maybe some you know gold or jewels or whatever the fuck conquistadors look for. And they eventually come across these tall wooden gold mines in the form of massive tracks of rubber trees. Um, and at this point, we're we're right at the very, very infancy of automobiles. So rubber is in high demand. What year? Uh, it's the late 1800s. Mm. So it's like, e- even if it's not automobiles, just rubber in general is becoming a, a very valuable commodity. So this was a huge find. He start, he's seeing money signs just floating around the air in front of him. But by paying for labor to cut down these trees and then process everything, that's going to dig into your profits, right? Yep. So now we get into the reason why he is on the list. He ordered his men to enslave the people of the Congo. Uh, his military leaders would be ordered to round up men in every village that they came across and force them into labor. And they would also take the women and girls with them as well. And they told them, if you don't bring back 15 kilograms of rubber each a day, we're going to kill these people. We're going to kill your, your, your women. Um, I'm sure they were doing some other pretty nasty, you know, horrendous shit to these, these women as well, because that's kind of what you do when you look at these as not actual people exactly what they did he would actually give out bonuses to his men for producing more than expected no matter the human cost and uh this is kind of where a a little organization begins uh called the force public which is his private military that would be made up of of congolese men so they would go into each village and they'd find the biggest toughest strongest looking guy and force him into service as a soldier these were the guys that when there was any kind of dissent or anything that would smell kind of like an uprising, he'd send these guys in to kill their own people. And if they didn't, he'd kill, he'd have them killed. And when they went into these other villages, they were told they were not allowed to waste ammo. So if you had to shoot someone, you had to kill them with one bullet. And to prove that they weren't wasting ammo, they were ordered to bring back one severed hand for each round they fired. So if they did this and they came back and the books didn't balance between 
how much ammo is missing from what we gave you initially and how many hands you brought back, they were executed immediately. Uh, All of this, as all of this is happening, nobody in Europe is any the wiser as to what the hell is going on. And word actually got Belgium saying that King Leopold is looking for uh, new recruits to come in and basically go work, uh, go work plantations. We're going to have you go down and help process these rubber trees that we're bringing in, which yep. was a lie. These guys that he was recruiting were actually coming in from uh, obviously Belgium, Norway, Italy, Sweden, Denmark. Um, and they'd sign up for it and they'd get shipped off to the Congo. And as soon as they got there, they're like, Hey, how do you feel about killing these people? Oh, I forgot to mention, they're not actually people. They're pretty much animals. So just go ahead. Don't feel bad about it. It's fine. So after a while of doing shit like this, these guys become desensitized completely to killing. Uh, They would do some really atrocious shit, like gut people while they were still alive and pull their entrails out. Uh, castrate large groups of Congolese men and nail their genitalia to trees in front of them, or just straight up murder them in groups and leave the corpses to rot in the jungle. Um, And some of the generals that were actually ordering all this shit to be done were writing back to the king about these actions, but it wasn't to reprimand the, the men. They were bragging about it. They were showing pride as to what was being done. Uh, Yeah. So eventually, a uh, oh, balls. So eventually, an international com- uh, commission visits Belgium after someone had leaked some of these stories out as to what's going on. They wrote up a fifty-page document about everything they found, and they present it directly to King Leopold. In response to everything, of, ugh, in response to this, and knowing he's about to get caught, he orders all paper records related to anything in the Congo be destroyed to cover his own ass. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yeah. So in 1908, the Congo became an official colony of Belgium, um, of the Belgian government. That is because up until now, it is the personal property of King Leopold. The second, the Belgian government didn't take it by force. They bought it from him. Uh, they paid him in the neighborhood of 50 million francs. I couldn't find a conversion from francs to U.S. dollars. So the next closest I could do was euros. Uh, and in today's money, that's about $59.4 million-ish. Uh, wow. And he he died in 1909. Thank whichever God you wish. Um, and uh, let's get into my bullet points because, wow, Fuck. He's responsible for bare minimum 10 million deaths in the Congo. He had the balls to ask other countries to help him colonize the Congo. And when the volunteers arrived, he had these men go and just kill natives and tell them, don't feel bad about it. They're not people. They're animals. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just kill them. When you ask you to kill them, don't feel bad. No big deal. It's like, like killing a chicken. So whatever. Uh, Leopold hid his activities in the Congo and the Congo from everyone in his own country and Europe in general, by saying that he was doing missionary work, trying to convert the savages to Christianity for their own good. Sound like someone we know. Uh, yeah. Like a couple of people we know. Yeah. Um, last main point I want to make definitely not the least because this is fucking disgusting to me. Before, like, it was like 18, I want to say it was like 1897. He built, he uh, ordered the creation of a model Congolese village be assembled at his summer estate in Belgium. Mm -hmm. He had 270 Congolese people shipped to live there and charged admission to the general public to visit his, quote, human zoo. Uh, They would come in and they would throw peanuts and bananas over the railings of these people like they were apes. Uh, the Congolese people that had been shipped in were forced to live outdoors, no matter the no matter the weather. Uh, seven of them actually died of either flu or pneumonia or some combination of the two. Um, here's the worst part of this whole thing, though. In 1958, at the Brussels World Fair, 
the Belgian government recreated the village and put Congolese people on display again in 1950 fucking eight. They have people on display like animals. 1958, not 1858, 1958, like 60 ish years ago. Um, so yeah, say what you will about the atrocious shit that has been done to African Americans here. This is worse somehow. <laughs> this is fucking disgusting. And from what I was able to find in my like short amount of research that I did here, for the most part, I found people in Belgium don't learn about this piece of shit in school. Uh, they don't learn about any of the human rights violations that he committed. Uh, they, 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 they sweep this under the rug. It just gets hidden because it's, you know, it's a stain. It's a point of shame, uh -huh. which I get, but learn from your history. Learn from the mistakes that were made in history. Yeah. So it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Which it fucking did in 1958 when they put people back on display like animals. Uh, it, it fucking disgusting, <laughs> absolutely fucking disgusting. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of. I mean, I'm I'm pushing Leopold to move on. It, potential, dude. I I think yeah. Uh, he, he didn't have the numbers as far as killing. But what he did was worse. I, I would say, yeah. I mean, yeah, it wasn't to his own people. He didn't starve his own people. But they weren't people to him is the problem. Yes, that's the thing. They weren't his, well, they were his technically his people because he they owned weren't the people. country. They were a commodity. They weren't yeah. people. They were animals. They were fucking, yep. they were a native species to be yep. exterminated as needed. Yep. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I would love to have somebody in the fucking final, but guess what? Dude, I, th I think, I think, I think KL2B is going into the, uh, going into the next round over Stalin, unfortunately. I think so too. Uh, fuck, dude. What a piece of shit. Like, yeah. So, We've got. I think we should take our break and come back with uh, <laughs> with who I think a lot of people are going to find is going to be the winner of this. But I don't know. Well, so why don't, all right. Why don't we take our quick break and uh, we'll come back and finish off this, and then uh, we'll see who moves on between Mao and Adolf Hitler. Oh, fuck. So we're back. Um, yeah, uh, so our last person in this Eliminator tournament and my final draft pick, because I honestly didn't want the piece of shit anyway, uh, Adolf Hitler. Um, so, I mean, unless you've been living under a rock for the past 82-ish years, you've probably heard of him. Yeah. Uh, Shitstash was born April 20th, 1889 in Upper Austria. Uh, growing up, he was an average student. Uh, he feared his father and loved his mom, which pretty common for the, the time back then because, you know, dad was the disciplinarian and mom was going to be the one to, you know, <sighs> fucking ice the fucking uh, the, the leader hosen marks that dad left on you. So after school, he traveled around and visited Vienna, where he supported himself, supported himself in quotes as an artist. Um, he did like to paint. You know, so there's that. Uh, he moved to Munich in 1913 and tried to join the Austrian army, but was turned away due to, quote, inadequate physical vi uh, vigor, which I translated as skinny ass little chicken man body. But I'm not 100 percent sure he seemed uh -huh. like a little bitch. But the following year, when World War One kicked off, he was drafted very quickly and went through eight weeks of training before being involved in one of the bloodiest battles of World War One which was the first battle of Ypres. Uh, there were 250,000 casualties combined in a little over a month. When I say a little over a month, I mean like 33 days. Trench warfare was a bitch. Uh, during the battle, Hitler was a message runner and would be injured during a gas attack, but he, um, 
And he would actually be awarded the Iron Cross second class, which is very, very rare for someone at the rank of corporal where he was. Uh Um, That was usually more. That would essentially be like the like a, a like a silver star, like right below a Medal of Honor, kind of. Where the Iron Cross first class is the is their equivalent of the Medal of Honor. Yep. So after the war, he would join up with an up-and-coming political party uh, that would that would evolve into what we now think of as the Nazi Party. Uh, he'd be jailed after the failed beer, uh, beer hall push, where. Um, well, I mean, while he was while he was in uh, in his um, recovering from his uh, injuries, he wrote this little book. Oh no, he wrote he wrote Mein Kampf when he was in prison. Uh, I thought he wrote it. No, I thought he wrote it while he was recovering because he no, had he, a he had an epiphany about it or something because he was blinded. No, he he wrote it in prison. Um, he did write some other. He wrote a lot of stuff trying to uh trying to get published in uh, Astara, which was a a, mm. a a fucking magazine that he followed that would essentially by now by today's standards be some like neo Nazi trash shit. Hmm. Um. But again, they bastardized the Norse religion and ruined it for everybody. Um, but yeah, while he was in prison, he wrote a book like we were talking about, Mein Kampf, which would actually go on to become a best-selling title. Uh, he, worldwide, is sold like somewhere in the neighborhood of half a million copies. So, yep. still I mean, still selling to this day. Honestly, I would buy it because I, I would like to see if it's an interesting read or not. I don't want any of the ideology bullshit with it. I just kind of want to see his side of it, I guess. You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, so after some turmoil, some other turmoil, he was eventually elected chancellor in 1933. And he was a fucking spokesman. Yeah, he was. He was very good. Very good public speaker. Like so good that he turned people's opinion like, you know. Yeah. A hundred, like I mean, he he turned like turned it because he uh he had the he, gift of gab for sure. Yeah, well, I mean he, yeah, he totally changed it over. I mean, you know, he a he lot basically of said speak. that you know, yeah, and he and they actually liked what he had to say. Um, and they couldn't, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, they threw him in prison, but then when he came out, he was even stronger. Yeah. And the brown shirts came out, you know, he started them. And in case you didn't need another reason to dislike Hitler, he was a vegetarian and he gave up drinking. I've got a, I've got a theory. You'd never trust a European that won't have a beer with you. And I generally, I have a general distrust of vegetarians as it is. So yeah. mostly, mostly vegans, but you know, vegetarians I can deal with because they don't have to tell you they're a vegetarian every fucking 30 seconds. Ah, so late February of 1933, the Reichstag caught fire. Uh, Hitler blamed Dutch communists, uh, but there's actually a lot more proof that uh, maybe he had the building burned down to, uh, you know, do some other shit uh, like pass a like pass some bill. uh uh, like passing a bill called the Enabling Act uh, that would essentially give all the power to Hitler and make the president completely redundant and useless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also started stripping away rights of the uh, German people. Um, he surrounded himself with some uh, some real winners, some other guys that could have potentially made this list, but, uh, you know, for the sake of not having 75 goddamn Nazis on here, we had to leave the likes of... Uh, Heinrich Himmler and Joseph Goebbels out of it. Maybe next time. Maybe. On September 1st, 1939, the Nazi war machine rolls into Poland and kicks off what would become the deadliest conflict in human history, World War II. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 million people died on all sides of the conflict. Not not overall casualties, that's deaths. Yeah. Over, uh, overall casualties is probably realistically like triple that. Yep. Just people that got sick or got hurt. So the part that obviously was going to land Hitler on this list was the focused destruction of anyone he felt was inferior. These quote unquote, and again, I hate this fucking term because it's gross. Racial enemies 
where everyone who wasn't directly into his Aryan race. So that would include uh, gypsies physically and mentally handicapped gays, blacks, which I'm not sure how many there were floating around in Germany at the time. Um, A few. Uh, He definitely didn't like Jesse Owens and he fucking ran all over Germany. And I hope he gave Hitler the finger as he was breaking records. That'd have been fucking great. Like suck it in your tiny mustache, asshole. He has a little thing. He had black, his black hand. Well, I mean, the fact that he was out there just fucking curb stomping Germans in the in the you know hundred meter dash probably didn't make him happy. But no, I, again, I mean, I guess technically, I guess he was actually a really good host. They actually, yeah, from, uh, yeah. from all accusations, you know, everything I've, I, I've read says that Germany was actually a really, really good host for Oh, him. yeah, but you you know inside, he's just like, mm, son of a bitch. <laughs> um, yeah. And actually, fun fact, now the, since we brought up the Olympics, the modern-day Olympic logo with those rings, like interlocked rings, was designed by Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he also didn't like communists, but, I mean, I get that. That's fine. Uh, most importantly, the people that he thought were the absolute bane of human existence were the Jews. Yes. Um, as we know, he ordered uh, camps to be built uh, for forced labor and flat out industrial murder. In most cases, uh, those camps were built all over mainland Europe. The worst of the worst were Austria, which um, <laughs> Austria, uh, Auschwitz, which was in Poland, uh, Bergen Belsen, which was in uh, Upper Germany, uh, Buchenwald, which was also in Germany, and Dachau, who was also in Germany. Um, yeah. Those were there was there's more camps than you can shake a stick at, but those five are the big ones where it was you were not leaving, you are going to die here unless something miraculous happens, which it's not going to. Uh, the people that would be rounded up and forced into these camps suffered some of the most vile treatment that any human has ever dealt with throughout history. Uh, they're, they were worked to death, starved to death, experimented on by the uh, notable mention from last week, Yosef Mengele, uh, or just executed by the train car full. Estimates range between 11 and 17 million people were killed in concentration camps during World War II under the orders of Adolf Hitler. As the last days of the war in the U.S. and Russians are starting to tighten their grip around Berlin, his inner circle would commit suicide to avoid capture or secretly escape via uh, a secret tunnel system, which a lot of people thought was a myth for a while. And then it's actually been proven that there is an actual, there was a tunnel system that had been created to escape. They actually Um, went to um, uh, the uh, airfield. Yep. Um, Which is featured in Indiana Jones. Yes. And also in, uh, hunting Hitler, which has got Tim Kennedy, who is the yeah. most American motherfucker that's ever existed. True. Very true. Uh, so a lot of people think that Hitler himself actually escaped to South America and that it was a double that sucks started a Luger in the bunker. Nah, uh, it's no. What? He, 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 he got it. He got away. No, you don't think he did? No, I don't know, man. Dude, there, if, if you ever actually watched any footage of him, he his he was in a bad way. Right. I know he was. But when they got there, his corpse is just a fucking charcoal briquette, and it just so happens to have a uniform on it. You could have done that to anybody. Yeah, I still don't you know? think uh he he couldn't have I don't know. I don't know. So I mean Hitler is absolutely potentially one of the worst people that has ever I don't know if he was born. I'd like to think he was more hatched or just like burst out of somebody's chest or some shit like that because he's not yeah. a human. That's so not he even ordered, like, yeah. I I mean it's 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 weird. I I don't you know there's there's really no competing with him. <laughs> realistically. No, the shit that he did, like you covered like a port you've covered like a yeah. portion of it. A, a fucking there's, fragment. A fragment. There's actually like a ton more like there's a thing called crystal knock. Yeah. Yeah, you have to look, like I said, if you haven't, look, if you haven't heard of that, you have to look into it. Or we can. Crystal Knock? It's actually one night. I know, but it was bad. Yeah, it's a night of terror for Jews. Yeah. Yeah. They actually, it was actually like where things fucking 
turned for the worse. And before yep. he even started with the Jews. He started with you, the gypsies. No. He started with the mentally handicapped. Yeah. Easier targets, so, though. The insane and the mentally handicapped. And he would put them like just to see how if people the the German citizens, the normal ones that weren't Jews, yeah. if they would um actually, you know, be able to take a, you know, actually see what you know, know what was happening to see how far he could actually take it, he would load them onto a truck drive the truck around oh not him personally but no one of his guys his people the brown shirts because that's was actually was the start of the ss was actually yeah. the brown shirts yeah and um, it, it got more refined when he brought in fucking himmler yeah uh yeah. but they would take and drive people around and they would take and actually revert the gat the the um the Exhaust. Exhaust from the vehicle into the uh into the in, in from from the vehicle into back into the vehicle in the back of it and actually yep. would kill people. Yeah. So this vehicle that would drive around looked like a you know a sausage truck or whatever. Yeah, it was probably like a like a big like box truck. Yeah. Would was killing people. Just yep. driving around in your neighborhood and people were dying in the back of it. So let's let's hit my bullet points here. I only have three for Hitler because I mean he's fucking Hitler. Uh, he again ordered the deaths of between eleven and seventeen million people because he thought of them as being genetically inferior uh, and blamed them for the shortcomings of pretty much every society throughout time. Uh, started a war that would become the deadliest conflict in human history so far. Preempt mm-hmm. that. Um, all in all, the range is between 56 to 85 million people, including civilians, died as a result of him fucking about and, you know, being a prick. Um, but, but, silver lining to that is, we got to get some stories of some of the baddest motherfuckers that have ever walked the earth because of this war. Yeah, They were fucking built different back then. You know, I'm, I'm no disrespect to anybody in the military now. Those fucking guys back then were built different. Like, yeah, definitely. No body armor. <laughs> you, you, nah. You're fucking around with 30 caliber rifles, basically. Just, you know, you take exactly. one of those in the chest and be like, nah, fuck these crowds. I'm still going to kill these guys. Um, And like I said, in my opinion, I think there's a very good chance that he got away with it. I think he sucks tired of Luger. I hope he did at some point. So now we've got to get into Hitler versus Mao. I mean, this is going to be tough. Because they're both not not nice guys. Yeah, but. I mean, numbers wise, I think Mao is very, very close. Yeah, I think Hitler has him beat. On numbers, yes. Um, he started where I mean, it, you know, just that was the numbers you're giving for people that were killed. I that I think that was just mainly the Jews that were killed in camps. That eleven to seventeen million, yes, that's the people that were directly killed in camps. Yeah, not the people that were killed out before the camp started. Right, and then the people that were killed on the battlefields because he decided that, Hey, I want to become fucking, you know, God. Yeah. You know, the, i fear, which, you know, now counterpoint to that. Okay. Hitler. Yes. He had these people killed because he thought they was, they, they were inferior. Mao killed his own people after convincing them that he was their best option to be prosperous. Well, that's what Adolf did too. He, he basically said, Hey, I'm your best option. I am better than what's here. Right. But there's something, 
there's something sneakier about how Mao went about it. Because Hitler was just like, no, I'm going to start a fucking war. I'm going to kill as many of these people as I can because I just do not, just straight up do not like them. Uh, because they're not, you know, blonde-haired, blue-eyed fucking... But the, but the people of Mao's country knew that Mao was killing people, whereas the people of Germany did not know... Some of them did, and did nothing about it. Some did not know anything about it. Because one of his one of his best generals at the beginning of the war, um, oh my god, why can't I think of his name? He was the no, um, Uh, he was a he was the oh son of a bitch, uh, Ludendorff, who was his his armored commander in mainland Europe. Yeah, had no idea about any of that shit. And then once like word started kind of getting out because he was not a Nazi. He was a German military officer. There's a a lot of people don't realize that there's a huge difference between the Nazis and the German military because the Nazis are generally the SS guys like that compared to the Wehrmacht who are just the general regular German soldiers on the ground. But once this, some of this stuff started kind of coming out, he resigned. He's like, done. Nothing to yeah. do with it. I'm done. Find yourself a different donkey. I'm out. So, I mean, there again, you have good people and bad people on each on both sides of every conflict. Essentially, he hey. was probably one of the good guys in Germany. Yeah. And it, well, I mean, and if you know what, if it hadn't been for. I hate this, you know, I hate to say it, but if it hadn't been for uh, for him for uh, Adolf starting his shit, you wouldn't have Eli Weisel writing night. Yep. You would not have, uh, um, 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 well, what's his name? J.R. Tolkien. Mm -hmm. Writing the Hobbit and, uh, uh, the Lord of the Rings, because that was mostly about world war one. World War One, but well, World War One two, right? No, okay, no, so no, no, yeah, because he no. served in World War One. Yeah, so I take that back. Yeah, that was World War One. Sorry, but you, you wouldn't have had. I'm not going to say thanks to him, but because of him, you got to, you got firsthand experiences of the people that survived through this whole thing, or some of the people that didn't survive, but you still got. Yeah their diaries. You got letters that they, that they had written. You got to see. He changed the world. Plain and simple. Oh, he did. The, the, the world today would not be the way it is. If he had not done what he had done, would it be better or would it be worse? There's no way of finding out. I don't know. Because I mean... if he hadn't done it, somebody else would have stepped up in a different country and done something just as fucking stupid. I don't. I, I'm not going to say it would have been because, and this is what I say: this is because this the people of Rome would have said this. Said, oh, if it wasn't for you know X, Y, and Z happening, because they they did they kind of did the same thing to the Jews, but they made them leave their homeland. They killed a lot of them, but they made also made them leave you know right. back way back when so i mean the sentiment of hating jews has just it's been not a new thing no i mean fucking look at egypt <laughs> no you it's... know 10 commandments and shit like that's where that whole yeah. thing started yeah you know um it's just a, a carrying on thing but i mean yeah, and unfortunately, it, it still happens today, for exactly. no fucking reason. Because honestly, I've met I've met some Jewish people in my life. They're pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're funny as shit. They make good bread. <laughs> Holla! I never met one I didn't like, to be honest. Eh. But you know, you 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 get people on it like in any any fucking shade or belief system that are just like hey, you're kind of a piece of shit but that doesn't yeah. mean that all of them need to die for it yeah yeah I you mean, know so I, I don't know i'm kind of like torn because i mean they're both mal 
and Hitler were pieces of shit. It's basically yeah. what it comes down to who was the bigger piece of shit. Yeah. You know, and I'm kind of stuck in that. Uh, who... But if you think about it, Mao's legacy continues on today still. The repercussions from Adolf Hitler are still going today. Right. But the system of government that he put into place that was responsible for all these deaths is still in power and they're still doing shit like this. Find, find anything about the, uh, the, the, uh, I believe they're called the Uyghurs, the uh, Chinese uh, Muslims that are being rounded up and put into fucking forced labor camps. Now, Hmm. still, you don't hear anything about it because they are so fucking secretive about it, but you can find articles where there's millions of these people that are being rounded up yearly and either just flat out executed or put into camps because they're a different belief system. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, this might be harder than Ishii and Mengele. I think it is because Ishii was just the fucking. I'm, I'm, I am def- definitely up in the air between yeah. Adolf and Mao. Yeah. I, I don't know thing. where to go with that one. You know, I mean, who caused more of an atrocity? Adolf. But where has the atrocity? You know, the, well, let's 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 think about it like this too. Who left a legacy? Mao, which is continuing, as you said. But I mean, let's let's think about it like this: if you were to write their two names down on a piece of paper and hand it to any regular person walking down the street and go, which one of these two people was worse? What answer is he going to get? Nine times out of ten, you're going to get Hitler. It's because Hitler is more talked about. Right. Mao was not talked about. Because... Honestly, I, I say we move Mao forward against Leopold okay. and see how that goes. Okay. Because fuck Hitler. He doesn't deserve to win anything. Fuck okay. that turn. Mao okay. moves on to the finals. Okay. Okay, so now we've got Mao versus this King is... Leopold the second. Yeah. What I mean if you're going total overall deaths, Mao wins. Yeah. Um, if you're going who was more of a Asshole. realistically, who was more of a piece of shit? Leopold. Yeah. And I mean, you, 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 merit, you, you, you use, merit, I say Leopold moves on. You used the key word there when you said asshole, which is we're doing the asshole eliminator tournament. I, uh, I, pers- I say Leopold moves on. Yeah. Just for because sure. of the simple fact that. Well. He treated a, a, a nation of people. Like they were nothing. Yeah, because they were nothing to him. Yeah. Okay, so looks like we're going to have, oh boy, KL2B versus Shiro Ishii in the finals. Okay, so King Leopold, bad guy, right? Shiro Ishii. Should we go back for a reminder? <laughs> no, he was the fucking, he was, he, he fucking, he had no qualms about who the fuck you were it was but here's the about... thing because they're both in the same category where the people that they were killing weren't people to them yeah it's true one were animals the other one were fucking lab rats yeah. um also let me just throw this out there uh shiro ishii would actually have people uh killed by lethal doses of x-rays uh to see how much the human body could take uh determine the relationship between burns and the length of overall survival time. Prisoners were torched with flamethrowers to, uh, and exposed to, uh, phosphorus bombs frozen. and chloride gas frozen. Unfrozen. Uh, they I were mean... injected with animal blood <laughs> buried alive. And uh, they hold, put them on display like fucking animals. Yeah. So, I mean, and then and then told them, hey, if you don't bring me fucking rubber, 
you we're know, gonna kill your women. We're gonna kill fucking everybody in your family. Uh, so I mean, they go kill the nerd. They say the nerd's the bigger asshole, or the king's the bigger asshole. And you you can't even say, well, you know, this he got to live afterwards. They both did. <laughs> yeah. The only one of these fucking guys that got, actually got their comeuppance was was Pasha, <laughs> which is unfortunate because all of these dudes should have been fucking shot in the streets. Exactly. Uh, dude. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, Leopold. It's got. Leopold? I, I think it's got to be. Hmm. I mean, Ishi was was a monster, but Leopold was. What's your what's your what what are you basing it off of? I, the disregard for human life, which you get that either way. But when you veil it with trying to be a good person by converting these people to Christianity to try to better their lives, which you didn't even fucking attempt to do then you lure people in to come work at your rubber factories. Then you send them there and go, well, actually we're just going to basically use you as soldiers to kill these people who again, aren't people because I said, they're not people, you know, okay. because uh, um, then the fact that he got caught and tried to cover his ass and did okay. so fairly successfully. Okay, and then he hi- basically hired people to go on to safari. Yeah. Kill, say, hey, if you want to fucking kill people, kill them. Yes. Um, as compared to Ishii, who did all of this disgusting shit that I just mentioned, and if you listen to last week's episode, did a bunch of gross shit there. Mm-hmm. But when he signed over to the United States, all of the research that he gave to them for the most part got put to good use by saying, okay, so now, now we know if someone has to have an X-ray, they can only be exposed for so long. If so, it's you, it's if you go into like a deep depth, uh, like deep depths of the ocean, you can only yeah. go down so far. He, it's going to sound bad. He did the gross work for us. It's, it's the, for, it's a deed for the, uh, yeah, it was a greater good. Yeah. You know, so he his... did the deeds, he did the evil for the greater good. Right. I mean, a lot of a lot of Mengele stuff got used for the for the better good too afterwards, like the All genetic right. shit that he worked on. All right. I'll um, go with Le- I'll go with Leopold. Leopold. Yeah. And I mean, I'll the, go with Leopold. The fact that they did this shit again in the nineteen fifties. Yeah. But they don't talk about that, it. That ain't right. No, and they they fucking hide it. They hide it. Exactly. Exactly. Ex- exactly. Definitely. I mean, they hide it. You know. So. Yeah. I mean, hey. I, I go. I go Leopold. You know. Sorry if I Our, sounded distant away, but I ha- I'm kind of holding a cell phone, and you know. <laughs> but so uh, our 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 winner Leopold. of the inaugural Dark Widows podcast asshole eliminator tournament is King Leopold II of Belgium. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, you're the biggest piece of shit we've talked about on the show so far. Now, here's my thing, is I would like to have... I would like to have you listeners tell us why, you know, who you thought should have been Yeah, if you agree or disagree, yeah, let us know. and, and, Uh, And then give us, like, you know, tell us, hey... You know, you know, this is why I moved on this one or, you know, because yeah. you might say, hey, well, no, actually, I think that Hitler moves on over Leopold and Hitler wins over Ishii or Ishii wins over, you know, whoever. Yeah, I mean, I, I am all about starting conversations about definitely strange shit that we talk about on here. Yeah. I had a so. lot of fun doing this. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, I, yeah. I had a, a fucking fun. blast doing this. So, a lot of fun. 
yeah, again, King Leopold of Belgium, our winner. Yeah, uh, who who who'd have thought that? Uh, honestly, I didn't really come into this expecting a fucking communist to not win. I didn't expect that. Because they've killed more people than fucking smallpox. <laughs> I thought that fucking a socialist and uh, Adolf Hitler would have won. Either way, uh, yeah. But the thing is, is like we didn't like get into like violent argument. We came to agreements on stuff, which was fun. True. So the, there was the debate, but there was no like, no, you're fucking wrong. You're just picking him because he's your guy. No. You know? No, I no, I. I... I picked like mostly your guys. I'm mean, yeah. I mean the 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 fucking final, you know, the finals on each side were all my guys. Yeah, and I didn't do that on purpose. I just no. We we, we went fucking round robin. I mean yeah. So and and you know we came to the conclusions that you know by going over the. The deeds, the, yeah, the research and the uh, <laughs> the provided yeah. evidence as to who sucks the most. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So that was a yeah, like I said, pretty good one. Uh I want to yeah, do this is, again. Definitely, I absolutely want to do this again. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So yeah, um, yeah. That's uh, it's it's that's the that's, that's the tournament. The, yeah. So this might be one of those ones where uh you you know if uh if you want to share with people you know or don't want to share with people and you don't have a pair of headphones or earbuds go get some or you want that bluetooth speaker head over to studio.com yeah. go get uh go get all of those or one of those you know cuz maybe you might want to share with somebody maybe you don't you want to you know, buy your friends yourself. headphones yeah Damn it. So then you so then you have uh you know get what you want, put it in your basket, go to checkout and put the promo code of Dark Windows 15 in to get 15% off your entire purchase. But if you forget to where to go, darkwindowspod.com. Darkwindowspod.com. You can find links to our studio page where you can go order some of the beautiful headphones. You'll yep. find links to all of our social media, except for Twitter, because Twitter's stupid. I don't actually even go on to Twitter anymore. When I post to Twitter, it's from Instagram. <laughs> yep. Um, you can find our Facebook page, Dark Windows Podcast over there. You can also go over to Age of Radio. Uh, I'm sorry, go over to the Age of Radio tab at the top where you can, it says, listen, uh, where to find us. Click on that, brings you to Age of Radio, where you can find your next favorite podcast. They've got mm-hmm. something for everybody there. Exactly. Everybody. And I mean, it, you know, now that I look back at this, I was like, you know, hey, this wasn't even like a Cinderella story. This is like fucking Duke just running a train on everybody. This is yeah. like Duke versus like the 50 best high school teams of the nation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, and Hey, if you want to, you can email us at dark windows, uh, pod dot com, but yep. dark windows pod at gmail.com. Sure can. If you want to actually go into detail rather than on Facebook. Yeah. You can go into detail and tell us, you know, you know, verbatim why, you know, you chose who you chose if you, if you, if you want to. Yeah. Or absolutely. You, go, you know, start something with us, uh, you know, on, uh, on the Facebook page, you know, we can have a really good conversation amongst all of us. We're, we're definitely very active on Facebook. I, yeah. I have nothing better to do with my time at work. So I'm on Facebook quite frequently. <laughs> yeah. And then when I get home, I'm like, I can research, but I can also be on Facebook at the same time, monitoring the page like a creep. <laughs> creeper so anyway with that yeah. being said that's uh that's the tournament and uh man we gotta do another one gotta do definitely another one. definitely so definitely. just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you the assholes will always be assholes assholes always win yes goodbye bye-bye <laughs>